it's said that sport is the great equalizer. It's a universal language. We were just doing a warm up now, so you can see that, right? It's amazing how two kids from the other side of the planet can connect through their love of sport. When you do a clean program, someone rings the bell for you. Can she see it right now? Yep. Although they are from different parts of the world, with different cultures and different lifestyles, they have a shared dream and share the challenges of one day being the best in the world. Even since I was younger, I always wanted to be able to go to the Olympics. And While sport is about competition, it's also about connection as young athletes from all around the world pursue one dream. I've been figure skating for almost my whole life. I love the satisfaction of landing, of jump, or just like achieving something. And being on the ice, you know, like you kind of forget about all your problems and like you just, it's just going out there and doing what you love. Natasha has, she's got quite a little spirit, you know. She works hard, she, she's a good competitor, she's pretty fierce in the, in the competitive arena, which is something you can't really teach somebody. You can try to help expose it and peel back some layers so that kind of comes through. She's very competitive, she does not like to lose. She came fourth once, or third, early on and I don't, don't know if I should be saying this or not, but they gave her a medal and she dropped it in the garbage. Yeah, she right. had no interest in having a medal that wasn't for winning. So yeah. that showed, and I think her coach is actually quite like that as well. She comes from good stock with some good coaching prior to working with us. She's always been here at the club. So she started off as a little can skate, a little learn to skate kid with a helmet and um, was identified pretty early as like, that little one's got something special. She originally had hockey skates on and we thought she was gonna be like the boys, follow her brother, brothers and play hockey. But then um, actually she was just skating at the cricket and um, one of the instructors, Tom, kept coming to us saying, yeah, so can we get her in figure skates? Can we get her in figure skates? So she joined the can skate program, I think when she was about four years old, she was playing hockey just locally with North Toronto. Um, and yeah, I think Tom asked me weekly, had I bought the figure skates? Yeah. <laughs> and so and we finally did. I mean, I'd always had like a vision of what I wanted to do, but I think only recently, like in the last few years, I've kind of realized like, I want to work hard to be able to do this, but I think even since I was younger, I always wanted to be able to go to the Olympics and win and just pursue figure skating. Actually, 
，能在冰上转啊、跳啊，做各种动作，也都很幸福。嗯，就其实一开始滑了大概一年多吧，然后发现自己好像真的特别喜欢这个，我也不知道，也没有一个特别准确的一个时刻吧，但就是渐渐意识到自己非常热爱这项项这个这项运动，然后嗯，快五年级的时候吧，换到了我现在这个教练这边，然后这个教练也挺严的，但教的特别好，然后呢要求也很高。所以就是，然后我发现我愿意为这项运动吃苦，我愿意为这项运动做我不喜欢做的事情，然后我就知道我真的非常喜欢滑滑冰。当然，你学滑冰在呃不同的阶段，肯定会遇到这些技术上的难点，会有时候练得很辛苦，或者是怎么着，我这个跳也跳不好哈啊都会有。但是他好像还真的没有说是说是我要放弃，我不想滑了，这个还真的没有过。非常开心，非常高兴，呃，然后再一个呢，就是说，我觉得也会让我对我自己的小孩儿，呃，在那个时刻，我可能也会对自己的孩子有一个更深入一点的，或者是一个更新的认识，就觉得哇，他可以这么通过长时间的付出努力，他得到他的一个小小的一个进步，或者一个小小的一个呃小小成绩，好像是也让我对他有了一个新的认识，啊、呃，当然最主要还是会跟他一起特别开心。奥运会，不管是专业运动员还是非专业运动员，其实都是他们心中的舞台，啊，那么如果想从专业角度出发来讲的话，那他可能从四五岁大概就要穿上冰鞋，在冰面上开始进行训练，比如说体能啊，就是每天几乎都要练习，比如需要一些舞蹈啊，比较一些体能啊，核心的力量啊，还有一些舞蹈的知识啊，这种他都要去掌握。其实他作为一名非专业的运动员来讲，他的梦想当然也是。奥运会，如果有机会的话，我想他的梦想一定是，也是希望能站到奥运会的这种赛场上。就当我成一个动作，或者在某个比赛什么取得很大的成就，我觉得，嗯，这个感受就好像起飞了那种。就算我没有真正的飞过，但我想象的这就是飞是什么感觉。因为就到时候我啊、家人、啊、教练什么也都会在那庆祝，然后就心里真的非常高兴，感觉自己要浮起来了那种。就是能这么接触在别的国家的滑滑冰运动员，我真的非常开心有这个机会。然后，我觉得这是件非常好的事儿，因为能互相了解，然后互相学习。嗯，就是比如说现在我跟娜塔莎那个有两次视频什么的，然后感觉效果都非常好，见见自己没见过的东西。Being able to meet people from all parts of the world is going to be really cool and. It's just really exciting to, you know, have new relationships with people that aren't living in the same place as you. Hi, Lucy. I'm Natasha. Nice to meet you. Okay, so I'm going to show you the rink. So, yeah, it's it's really nice facility. So, over there we have the like kind of watching, and you can eat there, and we tie our skates there because of COVID. Um, and then here's the actual rink. Our zamboni is over there. This is our rink. Um, right now there are some people from, like some students from other coaches who are training. So we train after they finish. I know. <laughs> And this is where our zamboni comes out.、Um, this is the inside of our rink. You can't really see it right now, but I'll、um, give you a little tour later. This is my coach. Oh. <laughs> would you would you be in any of the photos, or are they? Um, it's kind of random. I think this one right here is me, the one in the black dress. Oh wow. <laughs> 
we were doing Phantom of the Opera. Can I explain what happens with this? Oh, okay. Then this is the Cricket Club bell. Do you know how old it is? It's like... It's about 100 years old. About 100 years old. And basically, after everybody does a... When you do a clean program, someone rings the bell for you. Can she see it right now? Yep. And then everybody cheers. Yeah. But if you don't do a clean program, you don't get the bell. Yeah. <laughs> it's only for like super clean, clean programs. Clean jumps, all the spins, level four. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I know. It's a nice little reward, isn't it? Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. See you later. See you. It's really exciting and cool and interesting to see how she's able to pursue the same thing as me, but like do it in a totally different way. Her rink is definitely more public, um, and it makes me feel like I have a great like training area. It's like a private area, and that you know you have specific times, and it's not too crowded. And like the more public area is definitely more difficult. So I think it's it's amazing that she's still able to pursue what she's doing you know but we all have we both have the same dream and we both want to do the same thing my parents are really supportive of me and so are my brothers and they're always there and my parents are a really big inspiration because I can look at them and see like they're world-class squash players and like what they've been able to accomplish. So I think having them always being there to help me and knowing what the challenges are, like being an athlete and being able to understand what I'm going through, I think that's a really big part. When Tash was little and she was learning how to, how to figure skate and doing different things, they would go on the ice together and the boys in their hockey skates and try to figure out what she was doing, if, if they could do it as well. And so there's a little competitiveness with them all. And I think Natasha's always tried to keep up to them Definitely. in all activities. Especially having two older brothers, right? It's like, I'm always trying to fit in with them and I'm always trying to do stuff with them and they have their own thing going, so. But I think as I got older and I was more, I, I had more similarities with them, then we got along better. I think it's it's a priority for our family. So, you know, we've given up other things and they give up things like they give, you know, you give up a trip because, you know, you have training. And I think that's um, definitely shows their commitment as well as I think our commitment as parents. Skating is hard to watch. <laughs> so, so, which is funny, so. Uh, there are programs that I haven't even watched the program yeah. where I just close my eyes on the jump. Um, so, you know, that's a bit different as an individual sport. I think um, the pressure there, I think watching a hockey game is a bit more laid back or you feel that that stress is sort of shared by a team. Um, and I think in skating, you sort of, you can't go back on a jump. And I think for us in a squash match, you know, you can have a really bad first two games and you could still come back and win the match. Skating is, is a harder sport in that way. So this is my most recent medal, which is from San Francisco, and I came second place with a clean long program. This is third place from Challenge 2020, and it was my first challenge, so that was really exciting. And then this is gold place at Skate Ontario Championships. And then on my wall, I have all the gold, all the silvers, and then all the bronze. I now in middle school, I really worked a lot, so 然后其实每次那个因为上学不能滑冰了，我都会很难过。但我因为我毕竟还是一个学生嘛，所以我会尽量把课业做好，然后呢，挤出时间滑冰。
是我花样滑冰能到现在这个水平，跟我那个家里人的帮助非常大。嗯，我爸爸妈妈和姥姥都很支持我做这项运动。嗯，我有什么成就啊，他们也会为我很开心。然后平时比如说接送我啊，什么给我准备饭啊，比赛的时候弄衣服什么的，也都是家里人帮着弄的。所以没有他们，我肯定啥都不是。他其实他学滑冰已经很晚了，不像呃那些小小孩很小开始学，开始去呃拉伸啊什么的，他那会儿还是很硬的。但是呢，就是我就记得那时候教练说你得呃压腿，呃横叉、竖叉，那时候就在家里面自己压压，然后一边压一边哭，拿着一包纸巾放在旁边，然后真的是一边压一边哭，但是呢。还是就是我们也没有说是太去逼他说你得怎么着，但是看他自己非常自觉的在那一边流着眼泪一边压腿，就觉得哇，他还是挺把这件事情当真的一件事情，他愿意为了这个去付出这些这些努力啊。他呃身上特别有一种就是就是我不放弃，我他可以就是让自己我我我就拼命去练啊，我跳十次不行，那我就跳二十次、啊，然后比如说他们也会做一些陆地训练啊。呃，我跳五十个跳不成，那我就去跳一百次。就是我，我感觉他真的是自己很有这种自我的这种驱动的驱动的力量。Um, so who is your figure, favorite figure skater right now? I mean, I really like Jason Chen. Because he's really good at skating, and he's also very good in his academic studies, so I think that's very impressive. Right. And then it's like he he skates professionally, but it's not his only profession. Mhm.、Mm、and who do you think will win in the twenty twenty two Olympics? Um. So for women, definitely one of the Russians will I think will win. Um. But since they haven't like selected who's going, I'm not sure like totally which one. But like, I'm really looking forward to going. I hope I can get a ticket. Yeah, hopefully, I'll I'll be watching online. Last year, I definitely grew a lot, and that was extremely tough for me because your whole center, like your balance, changes, and so you have to readjust how you do everything. And so a jump that I was definitely having trouble with was triple lutz. And it was a little discouraging because before COVID, I had like I was landing it frequently, and then、um, I was off the ice for a while, and then I came back and I had grown, and then I, you know, I wasn't able to do it, and so it definitely took a few months for me to get it back. She's always, you know, striving to get better, and she's getting better, and trying to be realistic, and you know. Yeah, you know, bodies change and center of balance changes, and we go through some of those, literally some of those growing pains. And I've experienced some of those stuff. So there's times where things just aren't working. It's because your body's growing, everything's changing, you know. And it's not for lack of work. It's just mother nature. But if you persevere, you come out stronger the other side. Yes, 
付出的这么一个呃项目吧，不管是体育项目还是什么，呃，其实对我们每个人来说都一样，你能找到这么一件事情去做，实际上我觉得是一件很幸福的事情，嗯、呃。呃，不是每个人都能这么幸运地找到自己这么爱的一件事情的，所以他既然找到了，我们作为家长来说，呃，从各个方面，我们真的就是会全力地去支持他，只要我们能力能够达到的呃情况下，我们就会全力去支持他。was making sure they had fun doing it and that you don't lose that enjoyment of whatever sport you choose because if you do, it's going to end. Like, you can't push your kids yeah. to be that way if they don't enjoy it. So we can open the doors, and, and but they need to want it themselves and love practicing and love competing, which um, right now they all do. We have these moments where we think back and say, why didn't I train harder? Why did I slack off? And those really get to me, you know? And in those moments where I'm feeling down, I'm feeling, oh, I'm not feeling my best, I think, no, in the future, you're gonna think back to this moment and you're gonna be like, why didn't I train harder? So that really motivates me. Like, in the future, I don't wanna think that I didn't try. I wanna always try my best. I wanna think, oh, I gave it my all every practice. She's always been very competitive and um, generally has always been near the top of her age class. She's an athletic girl and she is a hard worker. <laughs> she doesn't, uh, she's not, she's not one to give up. Yeah, Isabella started at the young age of seven and uh, we've seen that she was really dedicated to the sport of uh, short track speed skating. Uh, she always had a dream to become an athlete and uh, make the Olympic Games or make the national team. And recently she started skating for the Team Ontario. So she does develop a character, she does develop the goals and she's trying to achieve those goals. Some people try their whole life to get to skate for Ontario and skate to that higher level. But a lot of people don't do it, but I'm just really lucky and really proud of myself for working hard to be able to represent Ontario and to win two medals um, at those two competitions that I went to. She's a great asset to our group and a great role model for the younger girls as well. I love working with little kids, just seeing them skate and being able to help them. Just a great environment, you know. They're all always happy and they're always smiling, you know. I just have these little games with them. It's just, I just love like helping the little ones because I was once there. I think meeting a person that does the same sport as me from a different country is great because I'm up to making new friends and having new experiences. I think it'll be a great opportunity to meet new people. Mm, 就是奥运冠军。奥运站在奥运的领奖台上，代表国家比赛。我觉得成为一名奥运选手，需要的不仅仅是嗯高超的技术和突出的能力，更需要坚韧的品质、那个强大的心理素质和丰富的比赛经验。我上小学的时候
我班级里面有一位同学，他也是练滑冰的，然后我就偶然就看到了他比赛的时候获得的一些，嗯、呃，奖牌啊和奖状之类的，我就觉得很羡慕，然后我就跟我妈妈说，我说，妈妈，我能不能学滑冰？我喜欢这个，对，然后就这么就上上冰，嗯，就是快滑的时候吧，因为就是滑速度的时候，没有人会控制你的速度。想滑多快就可以滑多快，在边上滑就觉得很自由。叫拼命三郎，嗯，他个子不高嘛，呃，从各方面条件呢，从身体条件不是最优秀的，不是最优秀的，但是现在从训练的各方面看呢，还是稳步的在提高。他前两年呢也发生过一些问题，就是冰鞋嘛，啊，这个冰鞋他也不说，然后。磨成就最后做了手术，就是在这个我都看不了，就是说在这种情况下他还在坚持训练，就是这种性格，这就是一个体育人的一种精神。呃，作为庞思雨呢，作为运动员，他是比较适合作为一名优优优秀运动员的。因为他呢，他的性格啊，呃，包括他的这种坚韧，这种对这种项目的这种短道速滑的这种喜爱，呃，在最关键的是他一种不屈不挠的一种精神，一种拼搏的精神。他在赛场上呢，敢打敢拼，然后在训练场下呢，他是很钻研的一个运动员。就我之前吧，就会比较着急，就会，嗯，就算是逼着自己，哎，为什么会这样？就这样跟自己说。现在我基本上更多是会，先给自己一段时间，对，让自己放空一段时间，然后再慢慢静下来，去找原因，找根部根本原因，然后再重新尝试。我们我们这些队友，我们平常吃饭在一起吃，然后住也是住在。一起的，所以说就更像亲人一样，就是有什么困难的时候会跟他们说，有什么情绪跟他们发泄一下，然后会互相激励，互相一起进步，感觉很好，可以跟嗯、呃、全世界各地的朋友有一些交流。你好，伊扎贝拉，很高兴认识你。今天是我们的中秋节，这是一个跟家人一起团圆赏月的节日，应该跟你们那里的感恩节一样。我我还要训练，我带你看一下我们训练的环境，我带你看一下我们换鞋的地方。这里是我们冰场，我们一会儿在这里上冰。他现在正在教兵，教完兵就是我们的兵场了，就我们我们要上兵了。我现在要回去穿刀了，看看我队友们，哎，能照到吗？看我们，看我的队友们，我马上就要上兵了。期待下次见面，拜拜。No, I think that's tricky. You want play normal? No. I can beat her sometimes, but not usually. She plays with me a lot, and she like helps me with my homework, or goes to the park with me. Oh, it makes us feel very proud of her. Uh, we, we started the Hall of Fame, the, the board that you were referring to, and every time we look at it, we just it just reminds us that uh, you know our daughter achieved so many goals in her life, and she's only 15. So there is lots of time left, and uh, you know her next uh, dream or the next goal is to make the national team. So there are a lot of awards for originals and like provincial meets, but I have seven. 
uh, provincial gold medals. So I'm a seven time provincial champion for my age group. So I have one from Quebec. My first year they went, I got silver in the 1500. So that was the highest one when I represented Ontario against people from Quebec, New Brunswick. So, and I had silver, that's my best one. I really well there, it was my first time, you know, really nervous. There's not a lot of female skaters, because people grow up, they, you know, they go to university, they leave. So now it's just me and a couple other skaters. So I'm going to Quebec, you have so many more females that are your age, that are like at your speed, even better than you. And you get to actually like, compete more, which is more of a competitive environment there.我的家在哈尔滨黄思雨和我教过以前的运动员然后庞思宇呢但是因为为了不得不做出这样的付出和努力当他训练的时候有的时候要平静啊或者是比赛表现的不太好了或者出现小的失误的时候有的时候他多多少少会有一些小情绪然后呢我们就会因为我们毕竟在异地嘛不在
and my dad is always there for competition. So he's there to cheer me on, yelling at me when I'm racing, go Bella, go! So it's great. We, we had an opportunity to, do, to live in different countries and every time, you know, they go to a locker room and speak with girls with similar age or competitors, there is no tension, there is no friction, they're all friends, they're all athletes. You need to borrow a jig to sharpen your skates, there is never a problem. So that's definitely uh, great that uh, kids don't really have those boundaries as the politicians do and then they just get together and, and have a really good time. I usually 对了，还有一个可以记录美好的相机。如果可以，我会无比珍惜。快到站了，我心中暗暗叹息。我明白我不能走出窗外，只能在列车里静静的欣赏。座椅很硬，但看到这片耕地和天空时，椅子也就和心
，就是普通滑冰地方也会有花滑的人，就是搞花滑，但是我觉得就是花滑不太适合男孩子。然后我就觉得，就冰球可能比较适合，然后冰球看着就特别刺激，特别爽，打着。就我第一次当守门员嘛，就是我我们跟一群就比我们大五六岁的孩子打比赛，然后他们就是那种就有专业训练那种俱乐部队，然后我们被被灌得很惨嘛，就输得很惨，然后然后我我们的守门员就是比较，我看他就一开始我就觉得哦守门员好像可以偷偷来，然后我就去了。刚开始的时候就跟小企鹅一样，就是上兵的时候站都站不住，完了那时候还得需要手把手的。扶着他，叫他初级的开始的一步一步滑行，完到后面的时候，他当他滑行能力上来的时候，完感觉他反应什么都比较快，所以说就让他试试了一下当守门员。我我们会有计时跑圈嘛，没有没有跑到时间的会有惩罚的，然后然后作为守门员就一直跑得很慢，所以就就经常会受惩罚，就很痛苦，然后他教练还不能反驳他。就就就，就你打冰球听教练的话是肯定的，然后就那那有啥办法就跑呗。就我们曾经就是很斗争，早上六点多就要起来，可能开一个多小时去冰场，然后八点的比赛，甚至七点的比赛，五点多钟就要起来。我记得很清楚，在上海最艰难的时候，那个冰场是没有，是外面有个临时的帐篷一样的那个冰场。呃，当小朋友进去之后是看不到球，全部是雾气，那个冰都可以化掉的那种样子。整个上海有大雾警报，然后我们还是去了，所有的队员小朋友们都去了，就是他们真的热爱这项运动。当做家长的看到他们这么热爱这项运动的时候。你就觉得这么小的孩子都可以做到那么自律，我们只有去支持。有一天他参加比赛完之后，他跟我说有家长批评他，因为他没有专注，没有守好。那那个时候我们是说你可以放弃，因为这个不是说你一定要去怎么怎么样。但是他跟我说的是妈妈，我没有守好是因为我学的还不够好，我只要努力认真的去学，我就可以成为最好的守门员。这个时候，说实话，他可能那个时候只有八岁、九岁的样子，他能说出这样的话，给我触动很大。所以我那个时候就觉得他是真正真正想去当一个很好的冰球守门员。目前就是比较自豪的就是，就是参加过两届的那个全全国男子的那个冰球联赛，就是作为上海队的首发门将是非常荣幸的。我就是没有动力或者情绪低沉的话，我会。我我会就是找一个假想敌出来，我就我会想就是五湖四海有这么多就是优秀的守门员，就如果我我不努力的话，他们就很快可以超过我，我要比他们更加努力，然后比他们更加优秀。Hello, Ian. Uh, my name is Xavier. Hi. I'm uh here in Calgary. Had to wake up pretty early to work out here. We uh just uh. Finished in the gym here. Was, hey, huge. These are my teammates. They woke up to say hey. hello and to work out. This is one of the rinks that we usually play on. Yeah, it's a any NHL size, I'm pretty sure. We have another one. There's currently a, a younger group playing right now. Cool to watch. Is there many uh, hockey programs in Shanghai, or is there only like a couple majors? Uh, no, there's only a couple, like, for, for big guys, for, for, for kids at my age, there's not a lot of programs, just, I think there's only one program is in, for, for shop Team Shanghai. Oh. So we'll, we'll have training and go to maybe Beijing Rink or other places where we can have a national game. But for smaller kids, they, they, now there's more tournaments for them. They got more practice times. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no. Uh, there's a lot of hockey going, on, going around in Canada. So there's actually like two or three like different leagues in Alberta. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a...
family is very important to me because they are definitely people I can trust that, like, hey, if I wanted to work on something, I'll say, okay, let's go do it, because they're all very sporty, and most of us play different sports, so we can all help each other in those sports. He's a protector. He will protect his family as much as they're gonna rip on him. He will never turn back to them. He will always be, you know, there for them. He's just the sweetest person, but the strongest person at the same time. I think that the sport of playing basketball has a lot of benefit for Ian. For so many years, this is the only sport he has maintained. This sport has the strength of his strength, his confidence, and the strength of his team. It has helped him to learn many other things. His learning has also improved. His own sport has also improved. His own sport has also improved. 所以我觉得这些都是冰球这个项目带给他的。就是你坚持一件事情，你家人对你的支持是必要的，因为就是如果就是没有人给你支持，你就有可能会失去那种动力吧。Yeah, he was very good. Uh, who do you think is going to win gold during the Olympics? Well, uh, if Carey Price was here uh, in Beijing, I I would believe uh, Team Canada will win the gold. But uh, unfortunately, so uh, everyone is not sure if he will be in China. As his statement indicated, that he was uh, mental issue that under street treatment. So uh, I I wish him well recover soon. If someone asked me what is Calgary like, I would say it's definitely a lot of sport driven uh, communities around here. You can drive around and you can see uh, like different baseball diamonds and different uh, soccer fields everywhere. And uh, a lot of the city was built during the 88 Olympics, so you can see a lot of things involving the Olympics around the place. What's inspiring about training on an Olympic campus and having many Olympians around me is just having them uh, being there and t just showing me that, hey, it's pretty possible for you to do it. And uh, my coach is, was at the 88 Olympics. This is 
and yeah, I'm, I'm just showing you our rink. So here's the rink we, we've just fi uh, finishing our cleaning the ice. And uh, this is my coach. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, and we we're just doing a warm up now, so you can see that, right? Yeah, I need to go to my train, so I'll, um, hope to see you next time. Bye. It's cool that they're gonna develop this friendship that I know will go on for a very long time. <laughs> I think it's educational for her that way, seeing another side. Well, I think it'd be great if they end up in the same competition at some point. So for the new year, 2022, I am hoping to come close to maybe a triple axle or a quad, or, you know, get selected for a Junior Grand Prix or like one of those bigger competitions. I would uh, love to either go to China to play tournament or have those teams come out here just to see what the different skill sets are like, see what their experiences are like in the different countries. In the new year in 2022, I hope to have more competitions with Ontario speed skating. During the pandemic, everything was closed. There were no competitions. <音>我新年的对自己的愿望吧反正我挺想考过六级步法和六级自由滑的希望能到那时候能考过就那我希望我可以继续积极向上阳光的一直就是可以一步一个脚印踏踏实实按部就班的一直往前走For these athletes, the road ahead is a challenging one. It is a journey paved with self-doubt and frustration, but also success and joy. It is the same path many successful athletes have taken before reaching the top of the podium, before their names are known across the world. This is the path that unites them as they continue chasing after one dream.